Attention everybody! This video was by far the most intense video we've ever filmed. While Mr. Beast does have some good ideas about building his business and brand, I don't really make money, I just reinvest it. Today we are going to have a look at one of his recent videos which gained over 162 million views and how this video can take us better investors. Thank you! And unlike any of my past videos, these 100 people will decide themselves who deserves the 250 grand. Everybody, enter your cubes! The first thing that came to my mind when I heard these rules was game theory. What exactly is game theory? Let me tell you a story. In 1776, Adam Smith, the father of modern economics, published his most famous work, The Wealth of Nations. In this book, he talks about how we are motivated by self-interest. For example, the butcher, he doesn't want to provide meat to the whole village. The baker, he doesn't want to provide bread to the whole village. They want to maximize profits. They want to make as much money as possible. But by delivering these services, this is how they make money. Call the lessons of Adam Smith, the father of modern economics. In, uh, in competition, individual ambition, ambition serves, serves the common good. good. Exactly. <laughs> Every man for himself, gentlemen. What is wrong with that is that it ignores many of the human interactions that we have between each other. We are human beings and even animals, they have interactions between each other and most of the time, these interactions are not 100% motivated by self-interest. For example, the baker, maybe he's the neighbor of the butcher and maybe one day the butcher was hungry, so the baker just gave him a bread as a gift without any self-interest. Or maybe they just collaborated and made a sandwich together. Human interactions are more complex and Adam Smith, he simplified everything. It was like physics, but in reality, this is not how it works. This is where game theory originates. According to game theory, we form alliances, we have enemies, and if you watch the video of Mr. Beast, the four keys, they form an alliance. So from the beginning, they were working together. So it was not self-interest, it was in the interest of the group as a whole. All these 10 people in the 40s, they cannot win the prize all of them together. Only one of them will win the prize. But they had to form these alliance in order for them to survive as a group for the longest time possible. The 40s made an alliance to try to keep any of them from getting out, no matter what. 40 alliance hung together, there's four of us. At this point, everyone outside of the 40s knew they were in big trouble. She's gonna eliminate everybody. If you're not on 40, you're gone. How do we bring this into the investing world? Let me tell you another story. Have you ever noticed when you go to the mall that all the shops that sell shoes are next to each other, that all the restaurants are next to each other? It would make more sense if, let's say, you want to go to a restaurant, there are two restaurants in the mall, one is in the north part of the mall and another one is in the south. They don't really have to compete with each other. Let's say the mall has two entrants, one in the north, one in the south. Those that entered in the north, they are going to eat in the North restaurants, the that entered in the South, they eat in the South restaurant. It makes more sense like this. But in reality, this is not going to happen. Maybe one of them would choose to move a little further in the middle. So now they are getting more customers compared to their competitor. So the competitor too, when they have the opportunity to move, they are going to move into the middle. So at the end of the day, both restaurants are going to be found at the same place. This is the equilibrium position and it is called Nash Equilibrium. Nash Equilibrium is an interesting concept in game theory, first proposed by John Nash, who even won the Nobel Prize in Economics for this. There is an interesting, beautiful movie, A Beautiful Mind, about the life of John Nash. I would recommend you watch this movie and it explains better in the movie how actually Nash Equilibrium works. Adam Smith needs revision. What are you talking about? We all go for the blonde. We block each other. Not a single one of us is going to get her. So then we go for her friends. But they will all give us the cold shoulder because nobody likes to be second choice. But what if no one goes for the blonde? We don't get in each other's way. And we don't insult the other girls. That's the only way we win. That's the only way we all get laid. We see the same thing in the business world. Let's take, for example, some of the big tech companies, Google and Apple. They are two of the fiercest competitors on the planet. Let me know in the comments whether you're on team iPhone or team Android. 
But we all know that Google pays Apple 20 billion US dollars every year so that the default search engine on Safari is Google. If Google and Apple are competitors, why is Google making a payment to Apple? It would make a lot of sense for them to compete with each other. Apple could invest hundreds of billions of dollars to make a search engine that is better than that of Google. But would it make sense? Would it be able to displace Google because Google is already the leader and Apple knows that not everyone uses their devices. Maybe you have an iPhone but you have a Windows computer. So on your computer you're going to use Google but on your iPhone you're going to use the Apple made search engine. So it doesn't really make sense for Apple to invest that much money to develop a search engine. It doesn't matter how much good it is, Google is always going to be the leader. So it's going to be a waste of money for Apple. And Google don't want to lose that big market of iPhone. So it makes sense for there to be a deal. But I always felt that Apple should be the one paying Google here. But I'm an Apple shareholder so I'm happy that I'm getting paid. There are numerous such examples of companies not doing what's best for them in the short term, but collaborating with competitors for long-term gains. For example, when Microsoft invested in Apple. These two companies were known to be competitors, but Apple was on the brink of bankruptcy while Microsoft was facing an antitrust probe. What is a better way for Microsoft to show to the world, to the government, that they are not a monopoly, than to help a failing competitor. So that's why they invested in Apple, and Apple badly needed that money. In the Mr. Beast video, the last two competitors were in the 40s. And that was the alliance, the strong alliance, the 40s alliance that was made from the beginning. So you see, making an alliance, working as a group, works over the long term. True, in the end, the alliance broke. Every vote was on a 40 year old. I thought you all had an alliance. But that's only because a stronger alliance was formed between these two competitors. So the alliance between them was stronger than the alliance between the whole 40s group. And now it's come down to 47 and 48 who have had the strongest alliance in this whole video since the very first day. In my own portfolio, I recently added a new stock to one group SE, which is a German company. It is called the Covana of Europe. But if you are going to compare Covana with Auto One Group, you will see that the margins of Covana are better. It's because of the way that the business operates. Covana, they are going to compete with the dealers. But Auto One Group, they don't really compete with all the dealers. There are some dealers that are collaborators. So they work with the dealers, but of course this lowers the margins. How is this important over the long term? This market is so fragmented, there are so many competitors that sometimes it makes sense if you want to gain maximum market share for you to collaborate with some of the competitors instead of you starting from scratch trying to be number one, which you will never be. It's now time for our game. Like every week, we look at my portfolio. So my portfolio is worth right now 55,200 US dollars. And every month, I'm going to add 200 US dollars and I aim to make 15% annual returns without counting, of course, the deposits. So watch the game, the earliest possible to reach 100,000 US dollars. So why this is a game? Because you also, you have to play it. Put your own number, a specific amount of money that you want to put in your portfolio every month with some expected returns. It should not be 15%, it can be 10%. And then a goal that you want to reach. This is how we beat the market over the long term. I'm sure the question on your mind right now is how does game theory affect the game that we are currently playing? the stock market. How does this really affect the way we should be investing? We already talk about businesses, the way we should be looking at businesses. Sometimes maximum margin is not the best. Sometimes lowering margins can be better for the long term. We need to consider all these scenarios. About the stock market, it is a little different. In the Mr. Beast video, they have a game a little similar to the show Deal or No Deal. They even brought the host of that show Howie Mandel to play with the contestants. Let me explain to you the rules of deal or no deal. This is so similar to the stock market. You have 26 beautiful models, each carrying a suitcase, and you have to choose one of them. W one suitcase, not one model. Each of these suitcases has a value from $1 to $1 million. 
And of course, you don't know which one you pick. I think it's a thrilling game of chance, this game, right? I think it is. That like, uh, there's a one in 26 chance a player picks the case with $1 million, right? Throughout the game, you will be eliminating suitcases by opening them and finding out which number is in it. Then there is a banker who is going to offer you deals to buy your suitcase at a certain price. You have to either take the deal or no deal. This banker is Mr. Market. Every day, Mr. Market is going to give you a price for the stocks that you own, for the companies that you own. And you have to take the deal or don't take the deal. If the price today is such a price, okay, maybe you're willing to sell your stock to Mr. Market, to the banker. You're willing to sell your suitcase to the banker to make that amount of money. So how do you actually play the game? You have to look at the multiple scenarios, all the possibilities, all the probabilities, and then you take expectations. So if let's say the $1 million suitcase is still in the game, you don't know, of course, if it is with you or not, and the banker is offering you, let's say, $5. You're not going to take it. It's not enough money. For most people, $5, you still have a big probability of getting $1 million. But now let's say there are two suitcases left, the $5 one and the $1 million one. You don't know which one you pick, and the banker is offering $500,000. It makes a lot of sense to take the 500,000, like Warren Buffett likes to say. A bird in the hand is worth doing the bush. The difference between this game and the stock market is that the probabilities are not equal. In this game, every suitcase has the same equal probability. But in real life, in the stock market, this is not the case. In a way, you can open the suitcase a little and peek inside and try to guess which numbers are inside. These are fundamentals. When you're investing in a company, you don't have to rely 100% on luck. You can use fundamentals. The fundamentals are real. You can analyze the company. And once you have these fundamentals, sometimes the probabilities can work in your favor. You have a suitcase here. You don't know exactly which number is written in that suitcase, but there is a high probability that this is a certain number because you know the fundamentals. Maybe in the i don't know you can weigh the suitcase you can open it a little you can shake it and when you do all these actions you know this this is shaking like one million dollars so there is a high probability there is one million dollars in that when it comes to the stock market fundamentals matters the most rather than just making alliances and meets it's not because someone is buying a stock that you should buy it that's why i always tell you be careful when listening to youtubers i will recommend you watch this video next have a nice day and goodbye